welcome back to the crazy world of CX, our trip to visit every CX store in the entire world. This time we have Doncaster, the horse racing town of Newmarket, one of my favourite CX stores in the entire world, Kings Lynn, and we will of course be finishing off in my local store of Norwich. Let's hit the road. Welcome to my continuing mission to visit every CX store in the entire world. From the weird to the wonderful, the big to the small, I am here to visit them all. This is the crazy world of CX. Hello again, folks, and welcome back to episode three of the crazy world of CX. My continuing adventure to visit every single CX store in the entire world. And this week we are back with three brand new stores. And as always, we'll be visiting my local store of Norwich to finish up this week's episode. The best thing about visiting a CX store is that you never know what you're going to find and you never know what retro awesomeness will be hiding in the glass cabinet of dreams. And trust me, this time I've added some absolutely amazing bits to my collection as well as something I never have been able to find. I've been searching for this game for absolute years and I cannot believe I finally found this absolute hidden gem for the Sega Master System. Before we get back on the road for the crazy world of CX, I just want to remind you folks, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As the CX stores are spread out all across the UK and even the entire world, it will take me a while to get to these stores, so make sure you subscribe to never miss a brand new episode of the crazy world of CX. Now, on to our first CX. This first CX shop is in this small mall in the town of Newmarket, which is famous for its horse racing. Normally these stores inside like these mouths are a little bit smaller, but you don't judge a CX by its size, you judge a CX by its stock. So straight to the window and have a look what we can see. So you can see here, there's the Atomic Purple N64, some boxed gaming watches. Of course, there's some Nintendo Switches because there is in seemingly every CX window in the entire country, but also some very nice looking SNES games box. So hopefully some good stuff inside. While certainly not the smallest CX store I've ever been to, this is definitely one of the kind of smaller stores. You normally when they are inside a shopping center like this, they are a little bit smaller, but that doesn't mean there can't be something amazing hiding in here. Straight away, I was kind of walking through. It was pretty quiet for a Saturday morning, which was quite nice. You know, I do go to a lot of these CX stores at the weekend. There were some really packed shelves, and that's what you're really looking for. As I've said many times before, it's not really the size of the CX store. It's what's inside there. And I thought today I'm going to head to this more kind of retro section, have a look to see if they've got any GameCubes in games in here, because this is a section which is getting smaller and smaller it's a console i really enjoy collecting for again there may not be millions of games on the shelf here but gamecube games are getting harder and harder to find and this is a game i don't think i've seen for a long while need for speed hot pursuit 2 like one of the early need for speed games before it became like super popular unfortunately this one did look a little bit rough i don't know if it's like very obvious with a camera it did look a little bit water damaged so i did pass on that one red faction 2 is an absolute classic game still some of the best destructibility in a game especially for its time this game like really blew my mind back in the day when I played it on PlayStation 2. There was a very, very small PlayStation VR and even PSP section in this store, but these are definitely sections that are getting smaller. I've had my Xbox One for quite a while now, but I think now it's a fantastic time to be an Xbox One gamer, just because you can pick up so many absolutely fantastic titles for £5 or under. Games such as Recall, this is like an open world action adventure game. It's really good, it's got a really good story and really good upgrade mechanics. There's just so many games that are getting cheap that you can pick up, especially games that aren't on Games Pass. Like, I don't think this game, Metro Redux, is on Games Pass. These games were obviously released on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation free but i think they're kind of like hidden gems if you're looking for something a bit grittier and more realistic in your call of duty games they're definitely worth picking up this one's been on my radar for a while but i did pass today when I was heading over to the Xbox 360 section, I could not believe how many copies of Gears of War 2 and 3, and even the original Gears of War, this CX had. I know a lot of CXs get absolutely just filled with these games that people just trade in all the time, but I could not believe there was this many copies of Gears of War. Like, where are these still coming from in this day and age? Like, it's not even just Gears of War. Look how many copies they had of Halo 3. I think just because these games sold so many copies, there's just tons of like tons of home front and of course tons and tons of connect adventures there may be tons of games for the xbox 360 that sold hundreds of thousands of copies but this game is getting harder and harder to find alice madness returns and this game is it's a really kind of niche game 
it's a really good one. I think it's one in the next few years is going to get really, really expensive. So to pick up a decent copy in complete condition at this price, I was very happy. I was really pleasantly surprised by the Nintendo Wii section in this CX store. They had some really good games, games I don't see very often, games such as Alma Alliance 2. Yes, at the end of the day, if I'm going to play this game, I'm probably not going to play it on the Nintendo Wii, but it's a really cool one to see. It's the games you don't see as often, such as Medal of Honor Heroes 2, which I think is only on the Wii, and it's like kind of a light gun version of Medal of Honor. It's a really kind of hidden gem game on the Wii, and if you like your light gun games, it's definitely worth picking up. I've been really meaning to play this game, Okami. I've never played it, and I kind of wonder, is the Wii version the best version to play? It's, I think like with the motion controls, it could actually really work. And here is a game which I'm definitely going to pick up. Sean White for the Wii. It's not the one everyone knows about. It's one I've never seen before. So for 75p, for a Wii game which I've never seen before, an extreme sports game, yeah, I'm definitely going to pick it up. As I said, I was very, very pleasantly surprised by this Wii section. Heading over to the glass cabinet of dreams, and sadly there wasn't much to write home about here. There was a couple of PlayStation 1 games, some memory cards, some kind of accessories, like an HDMI adapter quite randomly. I don't think I've seen one of them in CX before. I've never seen a boxed steering wheel for one of the older consoles before. That was pretty cool, but those things take some severe space. I expect somebody just traded in their entire PlayStation 1 collection. Nothing too major here. Heading into the next bit, of course, there's some Xboxes. There's also some Xboxes. That one looked pretty rough. Like I'm quite surprised they cleaned it up a little bit. Some quite nice Dreamcast bits here, like some box games, the light gun. Couple of Mega Drive and Mars system games. Nothing like, as I said, nothing too exciting. But it's always good to see at least a little bit of the retro. We'd seen that one box SNES game in the window, and that was definitely the best of this bunch. There was a couple of other ones in here, but they were a little bit rough. Like, this is the thing with CX. If you buy boxed cardboard retro, it's always best to check out what it's like. Like, the bottom of that SNES was a little... Well, it was very discoloured. Let's not beat around the bush. There were some other box SNES games in here, but I think, for me, I'd want them in slightly better condition than this. But let me know. Would you have picked these up in the comments down below? Hiding the back of the PlayStation controllers was this very nice Street Fighter one, which I have never seen before, which I thought was pretty cool. So there we have it. That was New Market. Again, not the biggest CX store in the world. They did have a couple of hidden gems in there, but the road continues. On to the next CX store. Next up was a store that I was super excited to visit, as I have heard nothing but good things about this store. This is, of course, Doncaster. And judging by the window, people are right. Like, this is the way to entice somebody into a CX store. In the window, we have Zelda, the gold cartridge, Silent Hill, Amazing Box Saturn Games, WWE NXT Collector's Editions. If this is the stuff in the window, I am super, super excited to see what stuff they have inside the store. As soon as you come through the door, you can tell this is a pretty big CX store. Like, there is a lot of stock, and this is split over two floors. And I think sometimes you can just tell instantly. I could tell looking in the window that there was going to be some amazing stuff in this store. So I wanted to head straight to the glass cabinet of dreams. And trust me, this was absolutely stacked with amazing stuff. Like not just consoles, possibly one of the biggest like Amiibo selections I've ever seen. They had Splinter Cell Collector's Editions, this like mini arcade this cabinet was just absolutely stacked with like amazing stuff. This was going to be a very expensive trip. Like coming to the other side of the cabinet, we've got some absolute grail N64 games like Paper Mario, £165 for cart only. But there's only one thing that really caught my eye in here. It is a Mars System game I've been looking for for absolutely years. I tried to get it last year for my 20 and 2022 game collectors video. And I'll give you a clue. It's not Clax. I am so psyched to find this. As I said then, this store is split over two floors. So let's head upstairs and see if we can guess what's up there. I have a feeling it might be film and TV, but this is the thing about the crazy world of CX. You never know what you're going to find. So as soon as you come up here, it looks like, of course, it's film and TV DVDs. But go a little bit deeper and they have a pretty large selection of retro games up here. Like... If I had come looking to see what was up here, I would have missed one of the best retro sections I've seen in a long, long while. 
As we all know by now, every CX store can be slightly different. And this is one of the only CX stores that I've ever seen do this. Put their PlayStation 1 games out on the shelves and randomly the other store that I've seen that does this is in this exact same episode. And there was a really, really good selection of PlayStation 1 games. And do you know what? I applaud the fact they put these out on the shelves because then you can actually check the condition of the games and see which ones you want to pick up. It's so much easier than having to get them out of the glass cabinet. I can understand why a lot of CX stores put these games in the cabinets. Like, they do keep the booklet still behind the counter, you do have to ask, but I for one prefer this way, but let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Here's another thing which I've never seen in any CX store before, a literal like bargain bucket of games. These were all 50p and yes, these were the absolute kind of bottom of the barrel games, like your kind of connect adventures, your FIFAs, but at the end of the day, I also applaud this. If the game's like this, just chuck them in a basket. Heading back to the retro section and heading to the PSP section as this is a section that's getting smaller every time and this is a game I really need to pick up soon, Metal Slug Anthology, as I think this is one of those games that is just perfectly suited to the PSP. This one is kind of slowly going up in price, I kind of regret not picking this up. This will always be a bugbear of mine and I'm quite surprised when a game is £2 they would bother reprinting a cover, but remember you can only ever buy these in store, they'll never be sent to you in a CX roulette, but still. Over the years, I have built up a fairly sizable PSP collection, about 100 games, but this one was missing from my collection, Motorstorm Arctic Edge. And these are absolutely fantastic racing games. These are like, I kind of feel like they're the spiritual successor to the Burnout games. Absolutely fantastic. And for £2, I definitely wanted this for my grown PSP collection. Checking out the GameCube section, there were some really good games here, not including possibly the most sun-faded copy of anything I've ever seen. This copy of Burnout must have literally sat on someone's shelf in the sun for like 10 years or since the day they bought it. This is a game I do want to pick up soon, but I know they do box this in with the link cable for the Game Boy Advance, so I'm probably going to hold out to find a copy of that, but that is definitely getting harder and harder to find. But the thing is with GameCube game collecting, I just always keep seeing games that I've never seen before. It's always these niche games, like this fishing game here, Top Angler. I have never seen this game before. I have no idea if it's good. I did decide to pass it as the case did look a little bit water damaged, but it just goes to show you can still collect for the GameCube for cheap and find cool games in 2023, because at the end of the day, if you can get this game for six quid, it's perfect. Heading back downstairs to some of the more modern gaming consoles, having a quick peruse of the PlayStation 4 section. I saw this game, Fahrenheit. I thought this game was going to get more expensive. Like, I swear when this first came out, it was really, really difficult to get hold of. But here it is in CX in 2023 for £22 on the shelf. But let me know, do you think this one will go up in the future? One thing I always keep an eye out when I get to any CX store is Steelbooks because you can normally pick these up super cheap. Agents of Mayhem may not be the most exciting game of all time. It's certainly not the best game of all time, but £2 for a pretty nice looking collector's edition tin. Yes, I'm going to pick this one up. If nothing else, for the amazing artwork. Last little thing I found in here in hiding the Xbox 360 section was this really, really nice Assassin's Creed Black Flag collector's tin. This was quite expensive. If it's been a bit cheaper and in slightly better condition, I'd have definitely been very tempted by this. Now, on to our next CX store. The final CX store we are heading to this time for heading back to Norwich is Kings Lynn. And I have said in a previous video I put out last year that this is the best CX store I've ever been to. This next bit of footage is actually from that video as today. It hasn't changed at all, obviously, but today when I visit it is absolutely packed. So this is slightly older footage you're seeing of the store, but as you can see, it is a very large store. And also it is the second store I have ever been to that has its PlayStation games out on the shelves. Does anyone know why some stores do this? Is it stores that are franchise stores or non-franchise stores? Let me know if you know the reasons why. It just amazed me there could be a copy of Silent Hill just sat open on the shelf. Heading over to the glass cabinet of dreams and there was some really, really nice retro consoles in here. These things were all in absolutely fantastic condition. And I think this is one of the most important things for a CX store is quality control. If you're looking for these older consoles, you want them to be in absolutely amazing condition. And every single one of these consoles was absolutely beautiful. You just love to see it. 
Sadly, there wasn't the best selection of kind of retro box games in the cabinet this time. And this is a minor gripe, but I think it's one that probably needs to be said. It is super annoying sometimes when you just can't see fully what's in the cabinet. I can see there's some Mega Drive games there, but they are very, very difficult to tell what the games are. Heading upstairs, and once again, I think we can probably guess what's up there, film and TV, but also it seems like this time there might be music. I think there's like less and less CX stores that are selling CDs, but you do still see them, and this one was the kind of classic upstairs at a CEX store, absolutely stacked with DVDs. It does kind of surprise me that they have this amount of area for DVDs and even CDs. Like you saw downstairs, it was really hard to see some of those awesome retro games. And like just to have them on display up here, you think would be a lot better. Like I'm, I always find buying CDs at CX is really difficult. Is they're not in genres, they're just in alphabetical order. So like, I don't know, you could have Slipknot next to Shania Twain. It's just really hard way and it just, I just think it is a bit weird they use this much space for DVDs, but just take a moment, just appreciate this CEX wallpaper. Heading back downstairs and perusing the PlayStation 5 section, I do think CX's prices have got better when it comes to the PlayStation 5. I think in the last year, the prices have definitely come down, and I do think they were charging a lot for a lot of these games. Like, Gotham Knights might not be the best game in the world. It's pretty cool you can get the Steelbook Edition for this price. This is a game I've been watching for a while. Like, I was never going to pay retail for this. It's now down to 15 But I wonder, how much cheaper will the Evil Dead game get? I am definitely willing to wait. Having a little look for the Xbox 360 section, and this is the way to kind of pull me in, a lenticular sleeve. I think all games should have lenticular sleeves. I think this is a thing of absolute beauty. I was very tempted to pick this up, literally just for the fact it has a lenticular sleeve, but I don't know, really, is that a reason to buy a game again? Let me know in the comments down below. I have been an avid collector of the OG Xbox for absolute years. It was one of the very first consoles I absolutely fell in love with collecting for, and CX still have some amazing games for cheap in it. Games such as Conflict Desert Storm 2, £1.50, I'm definitely picking that one up. It's just, it's a console that's going to get harder to collect for over the next few years, and now is the time to pick up a lot of these games if you can get them cheap. I was tempted to pick up the Atari Anthology, I did pass on that one as... I've got Atari anthologies on so many consoles already. This surprised me. I never realised Call of Duty 3 released on the original Xbox as well. I think this was a game I bought when I first got my Xbox 360. It was a game I literally bought on launch day. It was the first game I ever actually played on Xbox Live. I'm always kind of keeping an eye out for those games that I've never seen before. Like for every Ultimate Spider-Man, GTA and Time Splitters, there is a game like Rogue Ops. And these are the kind of games I love to pick up. A £3 game I've never heard of for the OG Xbox, why pass that up? Now, I wouldn't normally be picking up sports games, but when it comes to football games, Sensible Soccer will always be one of my very favourites. So I'm playing this back on the Mega Drive, I never knew this was on the OG Xbox, and for £1.50, I'm happy to add this one to my collection. And this is the thing when you go to CX, you never know what you're going to find. As I was checking out, there was a couple of hidden boxed retro games here it's kind of annoying that these weren't on displays i could have been tempted by quite a few of these but we have one last stop as always heading back to my local cx in the city of norwich here we go then straight out of the post office and straight into my local cx store in the city of norwich and straight to the glass cabinet of dreams and there was some really nice stuff here this time some box n64 some really nice consoles that nez was in really good condition some game boys some playstation vitas loads of ps1 games including one of the most expensive games on the console klonoa it is, of course, an absolute holy grail game, but more on that one later. There is some stuff here that I've never seen before. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen a mega CD game in my local store. Unfortunately, I already had that. And also the first time I've ever seen a 32X game in this store. And also, annoyingly, the second time I've seen MDK2 on the Dreamcast. I actually picked that up the last time I was in store. There was a really, really good selection in here. There normally is, but today was definitely a very good day for retro in Norwich CX. As I said before earlier in the video, when I look around the shelves, I'll often look for steelbooks. 
It is kind of annoying that I don't have these on the shelf, but I can understand why, as these steelbooks can easily be damaged or dented, but it does go to show you can pick up a lot of these steelbooks normally for the same price as the games themselves. So you might as well get the steelbook version at the end of the day, but let me know, what's the best steelbook version you've picked up? In the last Platinum Project video, you might have seen me pick up Medieval for the PlayStation 1. It is, of course, the Platinum version. But when I was in CX and saw this copy of Medieval for the PlayStation 4 this time for £10, I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick it up. I want to replay really this game. There's plenty of copies. Let's find the best condition copy and add it to the collection. Before I headed off, I had to know. Looking at the PlayStation 1 games earlier, you can see right in the middle there was that copy of Klonoa. £140. But this is the thing when you buy a game from CX. You never know if the game is complete, in good condition, and has its manual. I had to find out. So it's a little bit scuffed. That's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame, especially for the money that you that. So even with the £140 price tag, Klonoa was not complete. It just goes to show it's always best to visit your local CX. Back to the games room. There we have it then. Another three amazing CX stores. And it just goes to show every single store is totally different. I just think it's so random that of all the stores in the world, it was this week that we visit not one, but two stores that both put their PlayStation games on the shelf. Now, let's get into those pickups. The first store then was quite a small CX store, but I still managed to pick up some pretty cool stuff from new markets the first game i got was sean white snowboarding world stage now i've never seen this game before on the wii or any other console i don't know if this is a wii exclusive but i'm a massive fan of these kind of extreme sports games to be able to pick this up for 75p is an absolute bargain because i got a weird mean this could be one of those weird hidden gem games on the wii because it is a snowboarding game that also uses the wii balance board now, if that it doesn't sound like fun, drunken shenanigans, I don't know what does. Alice Madness Returns is a game I've been looking for for quite a while, and it is a fairly uncommon game for the Xbox 360. As you saw in the video, like, there's so many Xbox 360 games that are a dime a dozen, but this is one of the rarer ones, and this is the kind of game that I think collectors are going to be snapping up, especially as this is only £12 at the moment, but trust me, this is an absolutely fantastic game. It is on EA Access on Xbox One if you do want to play it. But if you want to add this to your physical collection, I would do it sooner rather than later. As I think this one is going to really, really go up in value. I have to admit, Doncaster is definitely one of the best CX stores I've ever been to. And I got some absolutely amazing pickups from this store. But let me know in the comments down below. Do you think your local CX is better than the one in Doncaster? Obviously, I'm going to visit them all eventually. But I might go to some sooner rather than later if they sound super special. First pickup I got from Doncaster was this Agents of Mayhem Steelbook. And that is literally just because if I can pick up a steelbook for just £2, I'm going to do it. This game, essentially for me, is a real annoyance. Because for me, this signalled the absolute death of Saints Row. But it's a very nice looking steelbook, if nothing else. I have nearly 100 games for the PlayStation Portable or the PSP. And this is one I definitely had missing in my collection. The Motor Storm games were absolutely amazing. I kind of see them as a spiritual successor to the Burnout games. They are just chaotic, anarchic racing games. They are really good. So for £2, I had to add this to my PSP library. Last year, I set myself a challenge to find my 20 most wanted games for my collection. This was the 20 in 2022 challenge and I wouldn't say I failed the challenge but there was games on this list that I didn't manage to find but I am constantly searching for these last few games and thankfully in Doncaster I found this copy of Sagaya and this is in absolutely beautiful condition and the manual, the manual, it looks like it has never been taken out of the box. I'll be very gentle with this now because I don't want to wreck it now. This is a game for me that holds such fond memories as this was one of my favourite games I ever rented for the Master System back in the day from Blockbuster. If you haven't played this game, it's very similar to kind of R-Type. It is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up It is a game that I have never seen since hiring at that day. So when I saw this in Doncaster CX, 
I had to pick it up. The problem is, as soon as a member of staff opens up that glass cabinet of dreams, I want to look at everything. And for the price and the condition, I don't think I could pass up this copy of G-Lock Air Battle for the Sega Game Gear. Now, I don't even have a Sega Game Gear console, I don't really collect for it, but when a game is in this good condition, boxed and complete for £12, this right here is the kind of retro you do not see every day, but when you see a game like this in CX in this condition for £12, you don't pass it up. I said in the video and in the past, the CX store in Kings Lynn is probably my favourite CX store of all time. But it just goes to show on any given day you can go into CX and find absolutely everything or struggle to find anything. Like, there was nothing really that took my fancy this time, but one section I'll always go to. If I find nothing else, I'll always jump to the original Xbox section. That's because it's still one of my favourite consoles to collect for. It was the first console I collected for hardcore, and it's a really cheap console to collect for. Like, a game like Conflict Desert Storm 2 for 50p complete with the manual this game is like old now i don't even know when this game came out it came out in 2003 a 20 year old game in this good condition for 50p and cx it's just rude not to and like when i see a game i've never heard of like rogops for three pounds i will take the risk because these are the kind of games like this could be the best game on the original xbox it probably isn't but for £3, you can afford to take the risk. And even with sports games such as Sensible Soccer 2006. Again, for £1.50, for a really weird kind of standout football game. I think the first, this is the last Sensible Soccer game, the iconic series. It just goes to show, like, CX is great for collecting for certain consoles. To be able to pick up these three games for the original Xbox for under £5 is a bargain. As always, we finished up our Crazy World of CX adventure, this time in my local store of Norwich. And no, I did not pick up that copy of Klonoa. And to be honest, it's a game I probably will never pick up because for me, it just doesn't have that nostalgic vibe. Like, I have paid large amounts of money for games in the past, but they are games that have a very special place in my heart. And the only pickup I got from Norwich this time is a game which... I have memories of playing back in the day on the PlayStation 1 on a demo and never played the full game. I also picked this game up recently for my PlayStation Platinum project. If you haven't seen that, I'm trying to get every Platinum game ever released for the PS1 all over the space of 2023. So go and watch that after this video if you fancy it. But the game I picked up this time from CX in Norwich is the PlayStation 4 version of Medieval starring Sir Dan. That's because, yes, I could go back and play this on the PlayStation 1, but I think this is very similar to the kind of Crash Bandicoot remake we had recently, probably years ago now. It's, a, it's probably the best way to go back and just really enjoy these games. It probably just tightens up the controls a little bit. And I have heard this one is still brutally hard. And this is the kind of perfect PlayStation 4 game to pick up at the moment. This is a £10 game, and these kind of games are exclusive to PlayStation 4 are the games that are going to go up in value so trust me while these games are cheap get the exclusives not just for the PlayStation 4 but always aim to buy exclusive games for consoles as they are the ones in the years to come that really hold their value. This video just goes to show when you visit CX you never know what to expect whether it's a store you've never been to before or a store you've been to many times like King's Lynn on any given day, you have to expect the unexpected. Like, I've been to that King's Lynn store and picked up some of my favourite games of all time. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 for the Nintendo Switch. I picked up my copy of Cannon Fod there. I even picked up my copy of Star Fox Assault. These were, I think they were two different occasions. But this is the thing with the crazy world of CX. You never know what to expect. Like... I went into the King's Lynn store this episode expecting to find something absolutely mind-blowing and I didn't. But that's the thing, it's just the not knowing. That is what I love about CX, it is a constantly changing environment. You never know when you're going to walk into your local store like we did in this episode and see a £140 PlayStation 1 game in Klonoa. It just goes to show, this is what I love about the crazy world of CX. You never know what to expect.
There we have it then folks, three more stores visited off the incredibly long list of CX stores around the entire world. I hope you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe because who knows, maybe next time I'll be in your local store on the next episode of the crazy world of CX. See you all soon.